right now. New at noon, one year and several robberies later, Seguin police arresting two people who are now accused in a crime spree in three cities. Police say they worked with several agencies across three Texas cities to find the suspects after a string of jugging incidents. Now, during a jugging, a suspect will follow a potential victim as they leave a bank or a business, all in an effort to rob them. Here's who they arrested, Stoney Oliver and Tiket Bird, both facing burglary of vehicle charges. Seguin Police Department of Criminal Investigations Division was able to locate vehicle rental history used by the suspects and tied both the suspects to several juggings in Seguin, Temple, and Buda. Police also accused the suspects of renting cars in Houston, removing the original registered plate, and then swapping it out with a stolen temporary tag. Then they would drive to the other cities to scope out more potential victims. Seguin police want to remind you to always be aware of your surroundings when withdrawing money. Also, avoid distractions, conceal your cash and valuables. And make sure when you return home, you safely store your cash before you run more errands. Elsewhere this news, some people in our area have been on shaky ground and didn't even know it. According to the U.S. Geological Survey, two earthquakes rumbled through the Pleasanton area overnight. As Katrina Weber tells us, while it wasn't exactly earth moving for some people, it was a groundbreaking event for others. Fresh off her overnight supermarket shift, Jennifer Garcia expected to be in the dark. She just didn't know she also was a bit out of touch. Shocked and surprised. Um, didn't really feel anything. She worked right through two earthquakes that rattled the Pleasanton area overnight. The U.S. Geological Survey recorded the first after 11.30 p.m. at a magnitude 3.9. The second, a magnitude 3.2, clocked in just before 1 this morning. We've been surrounded by loud noises all night with construction workers, so... She's not the only one who went on with business as usual in the middle of the earth-shaking event. Most people in that area missed it completely. According to the USGS, the earthquake's epicenter was about 19 kilometers or close to 12 miles east of Pleasanton. That puts us right about here, just a stone's throw away from the community known as Black Hill. I was scared. At his home in that town, Paul Riggs suddenly found himself wide awake. The dogs started barking, I jumped out of bed and flipped on the light. And he didn't know what to think at first. Instead of a rattling or rolling, he says he heard a loud boom that sounded like something hitting his house. No damage, one picture had fallen off a uh, window, edge of window. Police and the local sheriff's office said they had no reports of damage from the quakes either. Still to Riggs, it was nerve rattling. I hope there's not any more around here. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Yeah, thank you so much for that story, Katrina. So we've got a little bit more information about that earthquake that happened right near the Atascosa and Wilson County lines. Again, it was a 3.9 magnitude earthquake. It occurred at a depth of 2.6 miles. It was shortly followed by a quake after that less than an hour, a little bit east of a 3.0 magnitude, so slightly less. So where Mr. Riggs was, Black Hill right here, that was very close to the epicenter. That explains why he may have heard a boom and the question is would you have felt it depending on where you live well if you lived anywhere from Pleasanton out toward Floresville there is the potential that you felt it and in fact a few reports of some light shakings of some homes a little bit further out it would have been very weak almost imperceptible and the reason for that is twofold a lot of people were sleeping 11 22 and it would have been very very weak when it happened so interesting there great story from Katrina if you've got more uh, questions about that. There's a story right now on KSAT.com complete with that map that I just showed you. Clouds and temperatures, not a cloud in sight and it is hot. 92 degrees in San Antonio, 95 in New Braunfels already and 94 in Castroville, but we're forecasting high temperature today right around 104. Our third day in a row of 104 degree weather. Coming up in the forecast, I'm going to show you the pollen count in the aquifer and we're going to talk about Saharan dust. David, Ursula. Thank you, Sarah. A victim found stabbed near train tracks on the west side. They'll survive, but the search for how that happened continues. Officers think the trouble started with a fight involving multiple people this morning. It was on Morales Street near North San Marcos. 
Police say that someone stabbed a man in his shoulder. He was taken to the hospital. He should be okay. Officers did detain one person at the scene and questioned them, but they have not said if that person is now considered a suspect. Also new at noon, police say two passengers attacked a Lyft driver and robbed him, and now officers are working to find those two. San Antonio police released these surveillance images taken at an apartment complex on the west side. Officers say a 61-year-old man reported that he picked up two strangers while working as a Lyft driver. He says they hit him in the back of the head, threatened to kill him if he didn't get out of the car. When he complied, he says they stole his wallet, took off in the car. Police found that vehicle abandoned nearby, but no sign of the suspects. Officers are asking anyone with information to contact Crime Stoppers at 210-224-STOP. And the search continues for a man who police say shot and killed someone on the city's southwest side. So far, police don't have a lot to go on. These are pictures of the suspect on a bike. The shooting happened just after 6 in the morning on July 10th. Police say this, is, this man shot Juan Martinez in the head six times while he was sleeping behind the Little Caesars on Old Pearsall Road. If you recognize this man or know anything about this shooting, once again, you're asked to call Crime Stoppers. The number, again, on your screen, 210-224-STOP. San Antonio fire crews hard at work overnight putting out a fire that was at a vacant home. This happened around midnight in the 300 block of East South Cross on the city's south side. Firefighters almost kept the flames from damaging nearby structures, but a nearby car was burned. Investigators say the house is a total loss and they have requested the city to now tear it down. No one was hurt fighting the fire. New information this afternoon on the claim that officers were ordered to treat migrants inhumanely by pushing children into the Rio Grande and then denying water in the extreme heat. ABC's Matt Rivers with why in the eyes of some leaders in the U.S. and in Mexico say that the state's efforts to stem the flow of migrants entering the U.S. illegally may have gone too far. The Texas Department of Public Safety under investigation following reports of inhumane treatment on the Texas border. In an email sent by a Texas DPS trooper to a superior obtained by ABC News, one trooper writing, quote, I believe we have stepped over a line into the inhumane. The trooper recounting a patrol where they came across a large group of migrants, including small children and babies, writing, quote, we were given orders to push the people back into the water to go to Mexico. Adding when they expressed concerns of exhaustion and drowning and contacted command, they were again, quote, given the order to tell them to go to Mexico. The email also alleging troopers were instructed to refuse migrants water in scorching heat and describing finding migrants severely injured by the newly installed razor wire along the Rio Grande. Some even stuck in it. Texas DPS responding to the claims in a statement, writing, Our troopers perform more rescues because they are the ones on the front lines, rescuing migrants from both dangerous conditions and criminal smugglers. Overnight, the mayor of Rio Grande City speaking about the conditions to ABC News. When you're looking at the wire, when you're looking at these floating devices, to be frank with you, that is a death trap. There is absolutely no consequence that would ever discourage desperate human souls who are willing to sacrifice their lives for the hope of the American dream. Mexican officials are saying the newly installed barriers just behind me there at the U.S.-Mexico border are illegal. They have sent an official diplomatic note to Washington, D.C. about this incident, and they are calling for an investigation. Matt Rivers, ABC News, on the U.S.-Mexico border in Eagle Pass, Texas. The sunny summer days may start to feel oppressive when they're accompanied by all this heat but harnessing that sun ray could help find relief in other ways. We're gonna take a look at solar energy and how it's powering one local company's latest projects. And UTSA head coach talks about strategy to keep his players from heading off to another school. Rising temperatures causing problems on the ground, yes, but up in the air as well, how airlines are now being affected by summer heat. San Antonio ISD needs some help, and it's holding a summer educator job fair. The district wants people to work for its elementary, middle, and high schools. The fair is happening at Lanier High School today from 5 o'clock to 7 o'clock tonight. Be sure to take your resume. 
This record breaking heat still has a tight grip on the Southwest. More than 80 million Americans are now under heat alerts. And not only did we tie a record yesterday in San Antonio, Phoenix shattered one. They broke a nearly 50 year old record high when temperatures hit more than 110 degrees for 19 straight days. It's taking a toll on people. A hospital in Phoenix uh, that was a COVID unit during the pandemic now being used to treat the most serious heat related medical emergencies. It's got beds that are specially equipped that can be turned into ice baths for patients. The heat also causing issues on flights. There was a Delta airplane in Las Vegas that was forced to turn around on the taxiway because several people on board were suffering emergencies due to the stifling heat on board reaching the triple digits. EMTs rushed on. It just felt traumatizing. They were running back and forth with oxygen tanks. The gurneys were coming. A flight attendant passed out. It was something out of a movie. And Texas on track for the hottest summer ever, El Paso has seen more than a month of temperatures in excess of 100 degrees. And that's why I don't think we never say it enough. If you've got to be outside, make sure you've got plenty of water, light clothing. And if you can find some shade, find some shade. Take a break from this heat because you don't want to end up like one of those people having to go to the hospital because of heat stroke. Yeah, absolutely. I agree, David. And, you know, it's not just the hot temperatures, it's the dry conditions, right? The aquifer is down a tenth of a foot over the past 24 hours, but take a look at, it's 628.6 feet above sea level. These are the lowest numbers of the aquifer since 2014. So very, very dry out there. At least the molds are low. Molds are present in low amounts at 360. Coming up though, Saharan dust forecast to move into San Antonio within the next seven days. I'll have those details and of course, a sizzling forecast ahead. Our stifling heat has one fringe benefit in a way. Solar panels, even solar canopies are doing great business right now. Max Massey introduces us to Big Sun Solar, a local solar company, to explore the reasons behind the increase in solar projects and what comes next. So we've been growing pretty steadily since we started here in San Antonio. Robert Miggins is the CEO and co-founder of Big Sun Solar, a local small business that is growing fast. Recently, we are, have broken ground on a project in the DFW area with a helicopter manufacturer called Saffron. And we're building a, a project pretty similar to this. It's going to be a really large solar project for them to accomplish some of their global um, sustainability goals, but it also provides free covered employee parking for their staff. It might seem complicated, but really the process is simple. The sun will hit the solar panels here. That'll collect up to 20% of the sun's power. It'll again go to this inverter, which then gets sent to this business, and the business can save up to 100% of its CPS bill. And really, processes like this really getting more and more popular across the state. They sit here and catch the sun every day and convert it to electricity and provide beautiful, cool, uh, covered parking as well. Robert tells me solar has gotten cheaper and cheaper. And because of new federal legislation, there's been an acceleration of incentives for businesses to adopt new energy projects. And that includes tax credits and a better return on your investment. More and more businesses are calling us looking for ways to A, maybe meet some sustainability goals they might have, or just to take advantage of tax credits. Um, or you know, just to offset their exposure to ever increasing electricity costs. And as Big Sun Solar and state energy needs move forward, we may continue to see more and more projects just like these. Solar and wind and other um, sustainable sources of electricity are an increasingly important part of how the ERCOT grid is gonna meet its energy needs. So solar plays a really important role in um, how ERCOT meets its needs. Max Massey, KSAT 12 News. Covered parking. I like that. You kind of want that right now. With solar panels, and you know they're getting full of energy because all they got is sun. Absolutely, so guys. Out there. And it, it's funny, coming up in the next half hour, I'm actually going to have a live look at how much of ERCOT is being fueled by solar and wind. So you're going to want to stick around with that. I was impressed to see how much 
clean energy we were uh, producing across the state. It's really cool. Okay, outside right now, not cool though. It is uh, currently in the 90s. Air quality is moderate, and the reason why it's moderate, you're not going to notice anything as you're breathing in. It's actually perfectly fine outside, but the reason why it's moderate is because there are some very light concentrations of Saharan dust. We're talking just a small haze on the horizon. You won't notice affecting your allergies. If your allergies are acting up, it's probably because we're spending so much time indoors because of the heat. So indoor allergies are an issue. However, even though Saharan dust is light right now, we do anticipate a larger plume of Saharan dust. This happens every year this time of year to move across the Atlantic and make it to Texas. The time frame on this is early next week. We're talking Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday. This is a snapshot of Wednesday evening. So a week from today in the evening, you can see that will have moderate to dense plume of Saharan dust overhead. That's when it could really start to affect your allergies outside. So we'll keep you posted on that. Otherwise, it is all about the heat right now. It's 92 sunny degrees outside. South winds at about 10 miles per hour. There is still some humidity out there from earlier this morning, so it does feel like it's closer to 100, but the humidity will be coming down in the next couple of hours, which is good news. 93 in Del Rio, 91 in Rock Springs, 90 in Hondo, 91 in Kerrville, 95 in New Braunfels. Zooming in closer to the metro area, we've got 94 in Rio Medina. Castroville, hope you're staying cool. It's 96. It's still 88 in Bernie and in Canyon Lake. Not too bad there in those higher elevations, but it's going to get hot for all of us this afternoon. And your KSAT 12 hour forecast will be in the triple digits in the next couple of hours and 104 for the high. Unlike yesterday, I do not anticipate us tying the record. The record for the day is 106. Six, so we're going to stay a couple of degrees shy of that. And then later on this evening, once the sun sets close to 830, it's still going to be warm. It's going to be 90 degrees by 11 p.m. It'll be in the upper 80s by midnight. And again, just to look at the forecast highs in your neighborhoods, 102 in Kerrville, 108 in Del Rio, 108 in Laredo, 104 in Pleasanton, 102 in Canyon Lake, and 104 in Gonzales. The good news is after this humid morning, dew points are going to come down this afternoon and we'll start the process over again. Thank goodness we're not having to deal with the heat index during the peak heat of the day. Can you imagine? Remember about a month ago when we saw a high heat index of 116, 117, at least we don't have to deal with that. Looking at the weather setup across the state, very dry, not a cloud in the sky, hardly across the state. All of the rain going up and over this heat high, which is currently dominating the forecast, creating sinking air, compressing the air, keeping the temperatures hot and preventing any kind of showers or storms for developing. And even though that heat high is going to move a little bit more to the west in the coming days, our rain chances are not looking great. Saturday, Sunday and Monday, though, we have introduced a 10% chance. If you've been paying attention to the weather, I actually had to reduce rain chances on Sunday because it's just not looking great for us to see rain. That is unfortunate, but if you are one of the lucky ones who gets a shower Saturday, Sunday or Monday, buy a lotto ticket. As you look at the forecast over the next several days, again, triple digit weather for us. We're going to add on to the triple digit tally. And again, coming up, guys, I'm going to have a live look at how the grid is performing, uh, where we're getting our energy from. It's an interesting fact on one of the hottest days we've seen in a while. An important okay. fact. Absolutely. The Spurs staying young, but keeping some experience, we'll explain. Coming up. The Spurs are gathering a collection of point guards. Trey Jones has been a part of the rebuilding project for a couple of years and is an important part of the young core, which now features Victor Wimbenyama. And Trey will get plenty of chances to feed the tall guy. The Spurs announced they have re-signed Trey, giving him a two-year contract. Terms were not disclosed, but it's reported a two-year deal is worth about $20 million. 41st pick of the 2020 NBA draft by the Spurs. Trey coming off his best season. He averaged a career high of 12.9 points, 6, 6 assists, and 3.6 rebounds in 29 minutes per game. Jones, 25 years old, has solidified himself as a solid point guard. Cameron Payne, who is the Spurs just traded for, and Devontae Graham, the other two point guards on the current roster. And the 91st Annual Texas High School Coaches Association Coaching School and Convention a success, especially if you were looking to hear from your favorite coaches. Several big-time college football coaches from the Lone Star State were there, including 
Jeff Trailer. Coach talked about the transfer portal and he said he will call a head coach on the phone who's going after his player and ask, what's up? And by doing that, he was able to already keep seven of eight players who were thinking about transferring out. SEC schools can offer student athletes more money when it comes to name, image, and likeness deals compared to AAC, and that's part of the problem. But Coach Trailer says his football players can do very well for themselves if they remain in San Antonio and play for the Roadrunners. I repeat, we, we can't pay what those other guys can pay, but our kids are taken care of. If you get on the field in San Antonio and you help win ball games, our city's going to take care of you, right? So I, we didn't keep those kids – by old shucks Jeff Trailer's thick accent, you got to have some booster step up. You got to have nice facilities. You got to win ball games. You got to be able to show kids you can get them drafted. And uh, we got guys in the league that are that are doing very well right now. And Tariq Woolen, you know, in Seattle, arguably in my opinion, the best corner in the league right now. They went in the fifth round. What a joke! Spencer Burford starting at guard for the San Francisco 49ers. We, we got numerous players on rosters right now. And that's just a couple. And I think you'll continue to see that. So why leave? You want to win a bunch of ball games? You want to win championships? Get a little jingle in your pocket? Get to go play in the National Football League and play in the best city in the entire country, in my opinion, in San Antonio? That's how we've done it. Sell it, Jeff. UTSA has also placed 15 student athletes on the Pro Football Focus Preseason All-American Athletic Conference team. This is going to help keep those kids in town. On the first team, you've got quarterback Frank Harris, wideouts, Gorian Clark, and Joshua Cephas, tight end Oscar Cardenas, edge Trey Moore, and corner Nick Troy Fortune. Second team, we see running back of Gorian Clark, Makai Hart, and you've got defensive lineman Nick Booker Brown, safety Rashad Wisdom, punter Lucas Dean. Third team, you've got offensive guard Terrell Haynes, linebacker Jamal Ligon, and safety Kalakai Nuchaku, and slot. Chris Carpenter. So there you got 15 guys selected to lead the AAC from UTSA. Another reason to stay right here in San Antonio. Lesson right there. There you go. All right. Guess what today is? Uh, I don't know. Another hot one. National Hot Dog Day. Ooh. And oh, you better keep that hot dog away from that turtle, Mike. Animals from SeaWorld are visiting, too. New developments in the Long Island serial killer investigation, which is now stretching into more states. ABC's Aaron Katursky with why a South Carolina property owned by the suspect and another in Nevada are being looked at as crime scenes. The investigation into Gilgo Beach serial killing suspect Rex Hewerman now stretching from New York to South Carolina and Nevada. We're looking from uh, beginning with molecular uh, evidence such as, you know, blood, uh, hair samples, DNA, fibers, uh, you know, and all the way up. Police seizing this older model Chevrolet Avalanche at Hewerman's vacant lots in Chester County, South Carolina. The same kind of vehicle that an eyewitness told police he saw before one of the victims disappeared. Hewerman also owns a timeshare in Las Vegas, where police say they're now reviewing unsolved cases to see if he had any involvement. Hewerman is charged with killing three women he solicited for sex on Long Island. Their bodies were found wrapped in burlap in December 2010 along Gilgo Beach. Nikki Brass says Hewerman solicited her online around 2015 when she worked as an escort. I had a really, really bad feeling. Like My gut was like telling me I needed to get away from him. At dinner, she says he asked her if she had heard about the Gilgo Beach murders, and to her, something seemed off. When he talked about it, he would, like, speak in a they and hypothetical, but he had this, like, smile on his face that made me really uneasy, and, like, he had this, like, glossed over look in his eye. Like She says she ended the date early. Until his arrest, prosecutors say Hewerman was living a double life using burner phones and anonymous email accounts to arrange sex and search for child pornography, while raising a daughter and stepson and commuting into New York City for work. I'm an architectural consultant. I'm a troubleshooter, born and raised on Long Island. Hewerman appeared in this YouTube video a year ago discussing his firm that also employed his daughter. Records show Hewerman married in 1990, divorced four years later, and remarried. His lawyer called him a loving husband to his wife of over 25 years and an involved and dedicated father. 
and he entered a not guilty plea on Hewerman's behalf. I haven't heard anything about an eyewitness who saw anything. I haven't heard anything about a confession. The attorney told us he had not spoken to the family, but police say Hewerman's wife and children were disgusted and embarrassed when they learned what he was accused of doing. And that was ABC's Aaron Katursky reporting. Police say that they did speak to the suspect's wife, daughter, and stepson, and they believe that somehow they didn't know about their father's alleged double life. Tropical storm Calvin has produced dangerously high surf off the Hawaiian Islands. More than one million people are under a state of emergency. The storm has sustained winds of 60 miles an hour and is expected to produce up to 10 inches of rain. The Big Island is expected to get most of that rain. Flash flooding and mudslides also expected. And as of the massive heat waves weren't enough, folks in some communities have to worry about wildfires. The massive fire in southwest Oregon, 0% contained and the so-called flat fire scorched more than 8,000 acres so far. The fire continues to grow. The area covered by fire exploded over the last few days. The first sparked over the weekend. Right now, crews are just trying to stop it from spreading by building a fire line. The cause of the fire still under investigation. Taking a look outside with live cam. Find me a cloud anywhere. Anywhere, Sarah. Uh, sorry, you're slow. Can't do it. Out of luck. Can't do it. Uh, in fact, across the entire state of Texas, it is very hot. Take a look. Heat warnings, successive heat warnings for most of the state and heat advisories for most of the state. This is the good news, though. The grid keeps on humming. And as promised, here's a look at how the grid is performing. 53% of our energy is coming from fossil fuels, but a whopping 41% is coming from renewables. That's solar and wind. And with uh, nuclear in the mix, too, uh, not too bad this afternoon afternoon and we'll continue to see regular grid generation as we deal with very, very hot weather in the coming days. I'll have a look at the aquifer and how low it is coming up in just a bit. Thank you, Sarah. Former President Donald Trump saying he did nothing wrong on January 6th, and he is launching his own accusations against the Biden administration. This in the wake of the target letter signaling a potential criminal indictment. ABC's Justin Finch with the charges that the special special counsel is now considering and why Trump claims he's innocent. Former President Donald Trump facing the prospect of another federal criminal indictment. That threat coming after he received a target letter from special counsel Jack Smith related to his alleged actions during the deadly January 6th Capitol attack and his alleged efforts to overturn the results of the 2020 election. Trump calling the letter horrifying news and defending himself at a campaign event in Iowa. They go after Trump, but they don't go after terrorists. We right? should give a little of that to going after the terrorists. Trump continues to deny any wrongdoing. Sources familiar with the special counsel's target letter tell ABC News it mentions three federal statutes, conspiracy to defraud the U.S., witness tampering, and deprivation of rights under color of law, which applies when someone in authority uses their power to deny the constitutional rights of other Americans. As Smith investigates the alleged efforts to prevent the peaceful transfer of power, one key question is whether Trump knew he lost the race when he called for an angry mob of his supporters to go to the Capitol. It's not enough to simply say, oh, Donald Trump called for a rally on January 6th, and that's a crime. They're going to have to have a lot more than that, and they clearly believe that they do. The special counsel also investigating alleged attempts by Trump and others to interfere with election results in battleground states, including Arizona, Wisconsin, Michigan, Nevada, and and Georgia. The attorney general in Michigan has charged 16 Trump allies, accusing them of posing as fake electors in an alleged scheme to illegally award the state's electoral votes to Trump, despite his loss in the state to Joe Biden. Justin Finch, ABC News, Washington. A woman with a love for music showing off her pipes in a very unlikely place, right in the middle of her own brain surgery. Why doctors say allowing her to serenade the room help them do their jobs better. And if you're sick of those pesky scam calls, help may be on the way. Details on the effort to stop robocallers.